This is the Flywoo version 2.1 Naked GoPro. This particular camera is a GoPro Hero 12, and I assembled this myself from the DIY kit that I purchased from Flywoo's web store. And this is the version 2.1 Naked GoPro touchscreen that I also assembled from the DIY kit from Flywoo's store to be used with the Naked GoPro. Now I'm very pleased that Flywoo developed this kit because I've been using this camera from GetRC. This is the Naked Hero 8 uh, for the past two years. And while it's been a great companion to my Cinelog 25, little Cinewhoop here, it does lack a few key features that I've honestly been begging for since I started using it. And primarily the touchscreen. What this touchscreen allows you to do is access all the same settings and features that you would find on a full-size GoPro. It allows you to check your exposure, your color profile, all of your settings, all without using the app, which is a welcome addition because the GoPro app, quite honestly, is very buggy and it takes forever to load. Loading the GoPro Quick app to change settings before a flight is often the bottleneck and the thing that slows me down the most. So I'm very happy to have this screen available so I don't need the app handy. Now, when I purchased this kit, it didn't come with a guide or any instructions on how to salvage the touchscreen safely from the GoPro or how to assemble all the components inside of the case. So I figured this out on my own and I put this guide together to help you assemble your own. So just follow along and I'll show you exactly how to put yours together. And if you happen to assemble the touchscreen and find that it doesn't work, there's even a section in this video on how to remove the screen safely without breaking anything or damaging the case and reassembling it properly so that it works in the end. Now you will definitely need some tools for this project. I recommend a pair of side cutters, a heat gun, small Phillips head screwdriver, and a utility knife to get the screen off the GoPro. I also recommend having some rubbing alcohol and some paper towels on hand. So here's the Flywoo GoPro LCD screen kit. When you remove the screen from your GoPro, it's gonna have this plastic perimeter around it. And the screen is relatively fragile and you need to be very careful not to shatter it. So I very carefully took my side cutters and I started picking away at the corner of the screen and I got it down to where there's a little bit of plastic stuck in this ridge here. And this piece was still here. Eventually I was able to get a grip onto the plastic and I was able to start pulling it where it would come out of the slot like this. You can see there's an adhesive holding the screen in the slot. And this is the way you want to pull this out of here. And now it's probably going to break the corners. The best thing to do here is to heat up the plastic with the heat gun um, and then get a grip on it again. So I'm gonna do that. So once you have it warmed up, try and carefully get a grip on it again. You're gonna have to go very close to the screen, but obviously do not pinch the screen. You will probably break it. And it comes right out. One last way around the screen. Okay, it broke again. And there you go. It's a little bit of plastic still stuck in this corner. The screen actually wants to come out of this case now. So I have a feeling if I take this tape off here, and the cables will be able to slip through. And I'll be able to take the screen out. Look at that. That's what we want. It's kind of a tricky operation. And now we can carefully remove this last little bit of plastic. And our screen is now being carefully removed and this should fit perfectly 
into the case. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. Now, I actually haven't seen any videos on how to salvage the screen from a GoPro and fit it in this flywheel case. So hopefully this was helpful to you. I will finish the assembly, but that was really the hard part. Now we have the touch screen fully removed from the GoPro case. We've removed the metal backing that was in the way before and every last little bit of plastic and adhesive that was stuck around the corner edges of the screen. Uh, and if you've done that all carefully, your screen is still intact, no cracks, no scratches, uh, and we can proceed to installing the touchscreen into the case. Now I have searched the internet for instructions on how to assemble this kit, and I have not found anything. But thankfully, this seems like a pretty simple build. There's only a couple of components. And now that I've done the hard part of removing all the plastic around the touchscreen, should be pretty straightforward to assemble this kit. So there are two main electrical components that came inside the Flywoo touchscreen kit. First one is this ribbon cable that looks very similar to this cable attached to the battery case inside the GoPro, uh, as well as this USB-C port that has a little clamp connector for the ribbon cable. Aside from that, we just have a little bag with three screws. I think we only need two of them. We have the CNC case itself, which is very nicely machined. I'm, I'm very impressed with the quality of this. Uh, and we also have some adhesive material. There are two sheets here. I think we only need the one and we should just need the perimeter here. I'm actually gonna apply the adhesive perimeter directly to the case itself, because I think it'll be easier to line that up along the edges. Now, before we assemble the ribbon cable to the touch screen, I'm just gonna take some rubbing alcohol and a piece of paper towel or cloth uh, and just wipe off my finger oils from the perimeter of the touch screen, just to make sure we get good adhesion. Now we're also going to remove any oils from the inside edge of this case. Once that's dried, the next step I'm gonna do is install the USB port and the ribbon cable into the aluminum case. You can see that we have both screw holes accessible, which will be helpful at this moment. I like to use a knife to do this, just to lift underneath and avoid touching the adhesive with my oily fingers. And apply this to the inner edge of our aluminum case. Now it appears that it's not perfectly the right size, but it's close enough and we can kind of stretch it into place. And in fact, I'm actually gonna cut the strip here just so I can move it over into place in the corner. It might help to have something like a screwdriver just to press down the corners. And peel off the backing just to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. I think that's good enough. It's not perfect, but we should be able to slide uh, the touch screen in here once we're ready. This is how we'll need to orient the touchscreen, the GoPro logo in the bottom left corner and the LED dot in the top left. And we'll want the USB port in the bottom right because this is how it's going to connect to our Flywoo camera. So one thing to be aware of is this ribbon cable actually needs to be assembled with the contact pads facing up and not down that's how these connectors are designed. So now with the ribbon cable with these connectors facing down, we can bend it back and that will line up with this connector. Carefully connecting that. And then the smaller one below it like that. And just for a closer look. So now I'm going to test the display.
There we go. And there's our touch screen. And it appears to be upside down, but our touch screen is powering on with the GoPro battery. So that is good news and we can go move on to assembly. Okay, so now that we've tested that the touch screen works, the connectors are connected the way we need them to be. This is the tricky part. What we wanna do in order to get the GoPro logo in the bottom left corner and the USB port in the bottom right corner, we use the adhesive on the back of this ribbon cable and, and stick it to the back of the touch screen. We should be able to sort of bend the ribbon cable up and over itself into an S shape and squish it all together. We pretty much want this right above its connector as such. We are going to be squishing that cable, but hopefully it's not a big deal. And we can get it all together as such. And it seems to fit. I didn't have to force it too hard. We definitely pinched the ribbon cable, but I think it'll be fine. It's not going to be moving back and forth in there. We just want to go all around the perimeter on that adhesive strip. And there's our touch screen. So we'll just try one more time to verify that everything worked. I'll connect the battery to the GoPro. And I found that uh, when I was testing, connecting the touch screen to the GoPro before powering everything on seemed to help. Now we'll power it on. At this point, your touch screen should be working. If not, Please keep watching. I'll show you exactly how to remove the screen carefully, at least my method. Uh, and you'll be able to check all the connections inside, reassemble it, and it'll work after that. I promise. Just keep watching. And nothing. Not good. It seems I've made a mistake. I think one of the connectors disconnected inside of the camera. So what I'm going to do is take a couple pieces of this double-sided tape. Make sure the screen is clean. Put one here, kind of right across the middle. Uh, and then I'll put another one right beside it. I'll stick that down, remove the backing. You can see I have my double-sided tape stuck down. I'm gonna take just this plastic razor blade case. You can kind of use anything. I find this type of double-sided tape sticks very well to smooth plastic. So that's why I picked this object. It's something that I can grab onto. What I'm going to do is take my heat gun and I'm going to heat up the aluminum case in order to loosen the adhesive on the inside. It should be hot enough. And if we just pull straight apart, and see the screen came dislodged. Uh, and we can see that one of our connectors is indeed disconnected. Uh, and it happens to be the small one. So we can reconnect that. We can reconnect that. And I just want to investigate why is it disconnecting in the first place? I think this connector just needs to be stuck a little bit further down so it doesn't pinch against the ribbon connector by the USB port. So if we put this kind of over here, just out of the way, and then reassemble, this should solve the issue. Now the best way to remove something like this with the double-sided tape, just so that you don't pull the screen out again, is actually to twist it this tape is rubbery and flexible, so it will come off nicely when you twist it. You can see there's no damage or residue left on the display. So there's our touchscreen. We can plug this in and power on. You can see we have power to the screen. Everything works just fine. And now, just as if this was a full-size GoPro, you have access to all of the settings 
Uh, this has never been possible with any naked GoPro kit that I've ever owned, any of the Gep RC kits, the old Flywoo kit. Uh, and the beauty of this is this touchscreen should work with any of the Flywoo V2 naked GoPro kits. And it may not matter whether it's a GoPro Hero 9, 10, 11, or 12. Uh, you should only need one screen module to use with all of your naked GoPro kits, uh, as well as your friends who you fly with. If they have the same kit, you can use the screen and you can adjust your settings. I much prefer this setup because the app can be rather buggy and you have some limited options on settings. Um, but I think this is a very clever design by Flywoo. It's very solid and secure, allows you to attach the display and the original battery. And you can see there's actually battery percentage, 85% which means you're not gonna have any issues updating firmware as a naked GoPro, where the GEPRC naked GoPros did have that issue. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.